Well, thank you very much for inviting me again, one of my uh, favourite reading series. And I love, love, love this new venue, I have to say. Um, and um, it's been a lovely night, mm -hmm. uh, very varied, um, some very varied readings, and I'm glad to be part of it. And uh, now I've got to follow the old dancing old singing. Just one little inaccuracy in, uh, in the intro there, B beautiful though it was. Um, the, the verb thing was actually a commission uh, for the series. It's nothing to do with that book, actually. It's an independent thing. And it was to do with their series on the dawn and the dawn chorus. And they had uh, uh, lots of different things about uh, dawn and choruses and dawn <coughs> choruses. And so they asked me to write something about the dawn and the dawn chorus uh, for the verb. So um, it's actually about the dawn and it's nothing to do with that. So I, mean, I will start with, with uh, reading that because what I, I, I found very interesting, I started reading up about uh, the dawn and twilight and what have you. And how you can get to such a, a, a grand old age and not realise that dawn actually has three different sections to it. And um, it's all to do with the degrees of the sun. And so it, it goes in six degrees, so it's 18 to 12, 12 to 6, and 6 to the sun coming up. And, and then you've got the reverse at twilight. So. Uh, his home. Oh, really? Wow, I never knew that. Uh, so I, I, that's when I based the poem on, on that particular, uh, well, it's not called Seas, it's, it's an idea that, um, who knows? I mean, who thought that one up? I don't know. So I wrote this, and it, it's um, an Obard, and it's uh, the three stepping stones of dawn. And the three are just, just, it does actually say it in the poem, but very briefly, because if you're as ignorant about this as I was, it will all come as a great uh, surprise, if not absolute shock to you, um, that we go through this twice a day. Uh, but there's, it, the dawn starts with the astronomical dawn, and this is where I discovered that what Paul McCartney, when he was singing, Blackbird singing in the dead of night, Sorry, Michael, that's terrible. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, not, not as good as you. But he's the only poet I've ever come across who can actually sing. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're all trying to sing in the poems, and it's all dreadful, and uh, it's not, not to be advised, but we found one who can now. Um, uh, and the astronomical door is where, where it's dark, and you do actually think that, that birds are singing in the, in the dead of night, but it's actually called the astronomical door, and it's just starting. The birds can detect it, we can't. And then you've got the nautical dawn, which is... Um, it gets its name from the fact that this is when the stars are still visible, so that the mariners, and we're all mariners as we know, um, can still uh, sail by, by the stars. And uh, then you've got the civil dawn, <laughs> sorry, you've got the astronomical, the nautical, the, the civil. Yeah, it's a bit of a come down, I know. Um, but, but the civil dawn is actually exactly what it says and it's when it's that bit where you can see things or the street lights goes off or if it's night they come on uh, you can turn your car headlights off presumably not in England because it's probably crap weather and you still can't do it and um, so and, and all kinds of peculiar little laws that, that, that uh, hang around civil dawn and then, of course, it's uh, it all rounded off splendidly with the sun coming up. What <laughs> 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 a bloody education is this, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crack on. Right, the astronomical dawn. As if, as in a dream, with all its full-blown stars hanging about with nowhere to go, the dark just got a whole lot darker. 
Across the land, a melancholy of kettles form electronic, it's an electric ley lines of shift workers, not elegant, insomniacs, troubled souls, late night scribblers. Undisturbed sleepers steeped in the overnight jumble of deep imaginings, slightly stir in their dreams the first riff of a coloratura bird, so far away as if from a dif dis different planet or distant county, with a peculiar accent on the verge of speech. Nautical dawn. First light, birds still at it. More noise fugue than choral exactitude. Stars still rove abundantly in the abundance. On a clear night, we can steer by them. Dark, but less dark. Blue strives for identity. It goes for indigo, lapis lazuli. Shapes indistinct, anthropoid. Everything seems a little bit haunted. A time to talk to the dead whilst solids are not yet set. It's a time of day we can wade through matter without bruising. We are in the borderlands. Now is the dawn between dawns. Horizon horizons still unobtainable. Extreme owls pass extreme larks like girl ships in the twilight. And civil dawn. Blue goes experimental. Exults. Arriving at several identities before the golden hour offers a banquet of citrus and salmon drizzled with windberry juice. Polaris disappears. Venus is incandescent. The air feels elemental. We bathe in unwet water. Distilled silence condensed clarity. There is no casting of shadow here, no rolling news. Shapes regain definition, consolidate positions, but they are not the same. They have been away and returned with the, the new acoustics of entropy. Night lights, Street lights and headlights switch off. Illicit lovers break cover. Stray dog walkers, sporadic joggers, wasted clubbers, early birds. The world brims with wordless articulations ahead of the big event. Okay. <laughs> On Monday, I walked and found myself famous. Um, <laughs> or walk and found <laughs> that, oh God, the outside world and all these crazy comments that you get from people that aren't usually, you know, sort of, uh, well, I suppose you used to, you used to sort of, we all get sort of like off colour comments from poets who don't like us, we all get used to that one. <laughs> um, but it's, it's like when you get, get these people that um, you wonder why they even are reading the poetry page in the Guardian because <laughs> they don't even like poetry at all anyway my <laughs> so anyway it was a god of, um, I don't know where to start explaining this because time is precious and we've got a train to catch but, uh, I did like so that Anyway, uh, the, 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 the snake goddess of Crete was published, and as one person said, 
it's all a jumble of words. <laughs> any sense of it. <laughs> and it doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> oh, God almighty, it's like kind of like one of my most straightforward poems. <laughs> right, you know, and I just felt like saying, you ain't seen nothing yet, love, you know. <laughs> obviously, I kept well away from that one. So, um, this is, okay, they say the deep. Um, very quickly, um, the, the main, th the, the, the eponymous uh, section of the book, you can actually go Poets and Players um, um, YouTube, and there's a substantial section of it there that they recorded. One of the interesting things, I think, is that the, it was in 2014 where I read with these two lovely people, Sarah and David, and... Um, uh, it was 2014, and before I read this, I had to do this massive introduction about um, migration and, and all these deaths in the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and it took me a great deal of uh, rooting out and research as well. And I couldn't believe that this was happening, and, and you know, people weren't marching on the streets. Um, well, events, dear boy, events, and now, of course, we are all. We all know about it, so thank God I don't even have to do a long explanation anymore. But the, throughout the book, there were different sections sort of connected with that, that initial section. And this particular section that this poem was taken out of was the abandoned. And it's really all about the abandoned goddesses, and particularly the, uh, uh, the Minoan, and particularly Crete, which is just like absolutely awash with all the old um, goddesses and female statuary and statues and slightly nervous about it because I'm not one of these um, uh, women who, who sort of go around, you know, uh, worshipping the goddess or anything. It's more archaeological. However, I do think there's a massive imbalance with the great, uh, three great um, monotheistic religions ruling the world, and I think there's a massive imbalance going on there. Um, so I do think something ha could be introduced and changed. But anyway, I've got a little replica of the snake woman. She sits on my desk, and um, so um, this is a, a little, um, this is one of her, and it's a snake god of Crete. I cannot grasp your high status apron, your pretty little pinny, in my hands to blow my nose and wipe my eyes as of, as of a child of yours and wash away this here now world and find a maybe kinder variant. It's like this, you see. I don't much care for the 21st century. The uproar of many peoples who roar, roaring seas, rumbling of nations, rushing on rumble of waters, roaring mighty uproar of many peoples who roar seas, rumbling of nations, grumbling mighty roar of seas of nations, of, of uproaring. I need to touch your transfixed snakes. Stroke the sergeant cat perched on your crown and suck your startling tits as of a babe. Wash away this here now world to find a kinder crew. To sail our tabernacle divine with fearless balance at your fingertips. Um, my next goddess is um, my absolute... Um, most knockout thing to ever is um, <laughs> Artemis of Ephesus. And um, I do argue, but I won't argue here because it'd be like in the bloody lecture, <laughs> you know, like the dawn lecture or something. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, Artemis of Ephesus, I don't think it's Artemis at all. Uh, I think it's uh, quite obviously a um, uh, a fertility goddess from a much earlier religion, and I think she's very, very misnamed. However, the world knows her as Artemis of Ephesus. And if you haven't seen her, go to Ephesus tomorrow and see her. <laughs> they really, you know, bugger the trouble in Turkey. Just go through it and just go out my way. <laughs> I want to see Artemis 
of Ephesus and not behave yourself. <laughs> she is stunning. Anyway, she came to my house for tea one day. <laughs> yes, she does, yeah. You can't believe this is not true, can you? <laughs> the lacuna of the afternoon tents apparitions in stock gaps of space. Vinegar flies or moats or floaters in my eyes construct the middle distance shore. Atomic baubles of low salt spray on no fat. With a sigh, I excavate my spectacles. Food must be prepared for rare visitations. Artemis of Ephesus will beam through my inner kitchen door, her unblinking orbs fierce with unseeing. Here she comes, rivers of goats and griffins preening breasts, bee eggs, leopard breath, horny things, electric claws, lion wings, all creatures great and small gully down her teeming pleats and plaits. I examined the fair. Would she prefer pomegranates, blue cheese, green tea, tiny sorted biscuits, <laughs> balls, <laughs> testicles? <laughs> I close the door gently and pray like a mantis. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, finish this section on the, on the um, who God to pursue it. Uh, okay, so I'll finish this. This particular little, um, the abandoned with uh, united female animals. <laughs> <laughs> My little joke on you know what. Okay, no emirates in this lot. Ishtar, Artemis, Namu, Astarte, Minerva, Isis, Athena, Namad, Hecate, Ashtaroth, Inanna, Mariam, Lilith, Eve, Azuzu, et all set out with their screech owls, wild dogs, steed boars, body snakes, raptors, love doves, crown perching cats, Skirt bees, lion wings, et al. An unholy crew with their fabulous familiars combined forces and swaggered down the crooked paths, spooked crossroads, wild hills, watery deeps, airy ways, highways and mean city streets. Bows and arrows and spears and animals primed for action. They storm the cock and bull and have the mother of all girls night out, parted till the dawn of time. Right, I, I'm, I don't have time to do half as what as I was going to, so I, I talk too much between poems, I always have done. Or some people unkindly or kindly say, I prefer the bits in between the poems. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and that's all I write the bloody things and just get on with you. Just, just, oh no, never mind. I am to write them, do If I don't write them, what the hell do I can't I want to be in between bits? <laughs> do, do I? I've been between bits, so, all right, I can see my problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so very briefly, I'll do, uh, I'll do three of these, and then I'll do a quarter, and then uh, and I'll go and and get me trained. <laughs> so, I can't go through it all, but it's basically... It's, it's water is the enduring feature. In between um, the, the, the shipping, the, the maritime shipping forecast, it, it goes round and it takes all those, um, the Viking North of Steer, etc., etc., goes right through the, the, the shipping forecast litany. Uh, it's a Sunday, I'm making the Sunday dinner. 
I'm listening to Meet My Crime on the radio. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, just one little glow when they said that Just a Voice has got Meet My Choir on a Sunday. <laughs> Never mind, nobody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> well, I do anyway. So. <laughs> uh, in, interspersed with, with, with these bits, and it's got the Gilgamesh, is it? It's, it's kind of like Gilgamesh in there. Mm. And uh, there's also biblical, because biblical things we um, dribble down, blah, blah, blah. So you've got all this stuff all in the mix. And you've got migration going across the seas um, from the beginning of time until the uh, present day. And these are all interspersed with um, lunar, lunar sea shanties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Viking, North Foot Sierra, South Foot Sierra. Warning of gales, Scandinavians, westerly, cyclonic. Carved snakes, malign horizons, grizzled North Sea, petulant. Tormenting skim of long ships, tickling their underbellies to within an inch. They came for our wheat, wool, honey, women, tin, mini hammers swinging from their necks, kipper ties, kiss me quick etched on their horns. <laughs> After what, that is like one of the rudest things I've ever written in the movie. I agree with get search. I just got a swing in bit of a murky mind. <laughs> After one lead, the darkness was thick and there was no light. You could see nothing ahead and nothing behind. And this is a refrain that goes all the way through, and it's the Gilgamesh, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's Gilgamesh going into the underground, into the underworld. I negotiate a monster cauliflower. Pyroclastic flow of the vegetable world. How come it's so massive? Is it a drugs cheat? Genetically modified? I slice distraction. Outer space deletes light. An unidentified, an unidentified smell of burning insinuates malevolence. I cut my finger on the surprise attack of longing for unimaginable midsummer polar nesophoric clouds radiating false dawns. A pair of fitful atmospheric doves horn in through my kitchen window. At the end of each section, some kind of bird comes, like as in the air. Uh, as in the Gilgamesh story and as in the uh, biblical story. Sea of nectar, Shanti. In the first molecule, in the very first molecule, in the first droplet, in the very first droplet, in the first water, in the very first water, in the very first very hydrogen, oxygen, sodium, chlorine. Fortis, chromaty, fourth, time. Northerly or northeasterly, becoming variable, then becoming southerly or southeasterly, winter showers. From all nautical directions, lives held by a thread of tarred wool, matted animal hair, lashed planks, bundled raft, bundle rafts. Isotonic ocean water is cryingly close to our internal body fluids, most notably blood. Hence, diluted ocean water, aka marine plasma, aka ocean plasma, aka marine serum. So, if we drown in the sea, we virtually drown in ourselves. There is not a crumb of comfort in this knowledge whatsoever. <laughs> After two leagues, the darkness was thick and there was no light. You could see nothing ahead and nothing behind. What mean Brussels sprouts and manky too? Bad green beads, Lynn. Not worth the candle. 
energy bills, nor of sea gas. Is that a whiteout spike in the dark, downward penetration of snow, orientation disconnects, reverse silhouette of running on empty magpie, returns in a deafening temper, putting us all on knife edge. Sea that has become known, Shanti. That is a real sea on the moon that is called sea that has become known. It's bizarre, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I think so, anyway. What happened? What, what, what were they thinking of? <laughs> I don't know. Is it, is it, was it, did they think it wasn't a sea and then they suddenly thought, oh yeah, it's a sea. They see, we'll call it the sea that has become known. Bloody hell, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> Namu, Namu, utterly watery deep. Namu, Namu, chaos of watery deep. Namu, Namu, void of deep. Gutter of sweet beneath, sweet beneath water. So sweet is very abyss. Bromine, helium, lithium, beryllium. I'm going to leave that and I'm just going to jump right to the chord and I'm going to end it off with the chord for this because it just. Uh, the quarters, there's four quarters and they go through the book and they're actually, um, all, all loads of this biblical stuff comes from the uh, Mesopotamian uh, myths and, um, uh, so, uh, and the Mesopotamian creation myths. So it's just all, all kind of like um, adjusted and adopted. And um, I found this wonderful website, and they did these they did these um, variants on on um, biblical texts and, and lines, and and they they're very very odd because uh, they're very similar <coughs> to an extent, and then suddenly things start to change, and and even though they're supposed to be the same text, and they're not the same text, and in this one. One of the one of the people um, um, writing down this inserts an eagle, and I think, where the hell did you get that eagle from? They I mean, just put a bloody eagle in there, you know? <laughs> and this is because how we developed as humans. You know, we just keep mismating all the time. And they're like, oh, just just like an eagle, is this? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it an eagle. The great one just came in now, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, an eagle. Sit down. Yeah. Um, so, one thing I've found about this is uh, that the the the, 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 um, the, the uh, in, uh, interpretations of it, the transcriptions get get more elaborate. And then it, it sort of like went back to the original. And I just thought, well, this is just like a pea rock. Now then, yeah. <laughs> when I say that, at least I know tonight, the only person in the room is going to know exactly what a pea rock is. It's absolutely the most. If you don't like bagpipes, you get this. But if you love bagpipes, and I do, and they just, the pea rock is like the coming, kind of, would you call it classical music, well, yeah, really? Yeah. It starts off with the, the most. Um, a uh, simple uh, little melody and then it gets more and more elaborate and then it just gets completely and utterly insanely elaborate and then it goes yeah. straight back down it's absolutely orgasmic <laughs> fantastic stuff i love it anyway so this uh, this is not the same effect of this unless he was going to actually sing it for it but, um, <laughs> anyway so this is a quarter and i took ones that obviously so I better go on with it. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, if I ride on the wings of the dawn, if I dwell on the furthest oceans, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uppermost parts of the sea, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, if I live at the eastern horizon or settle at the western limits, if I take wings with the dawn and settle down on the western horizon, if I were to fly on the wings of the dawn and settle down on the other side of the sea, if I shall lift my wings like an eagle's and dwell at the end of the sea, 
If I take the wings of the dawn and dwell at the uppermost parts of the sea. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uppermost parts of the sea. If I take the wings in the morning and dwell in the uppermost parts of the sea. If I take the wings of the dawn and dwell in the uppermost parts of the, uttermost parts of the sea. If I take the wings of the dawn and settle in the uttermost parts of the sea. If I climb upwards on the rays of the morning sun or land on the most distant shore of the sea where the sun sets. If I take the wings of the morning, if I were so to speed across the earth on the wings of the dawn and having done so were to dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. If I take the wings of the morning and fly as swift as the morning light to the east, to the very extremity of it, and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, in the most distant isles of it, in the furthest part of the world. If I take the wings of the morning, I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>